you know, in today's regulatory environment, it's virtually impossible to, to violate rules. And this is something that the public really doesn't understand. And you, if you read things in the newspaper and you see somebody, you know, violate a rule, you say, well, you know, they're always doing this. But you, it's impossible for you to go under, for a violation to go undetected. Certainly not for a, a considerable period of time. Uh, and when you consider the volumes of trading, the trillions of, of dollars of trading that go on, uh, I mean, our firm, for example, alone, we trade in excess of $1 trillion a year. So, and that's one firm. You know, so you can, you, you, when you look at the scope of the trading uh, that goes on today in Wall Street, and you look at the, what we would consider to be the infractions, uh, they're relatively small, you know, primarily because, you know, of all the regulation. And most firms do try to comply with that. So we, we, we determined that the best thing for us, to, for us to do was basically to take the human being out of the equation. Now that had two advantages in our industry. Number one, when you take the human being out of the equation, you solve your regulatory problems. Because the, 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 the nature of any human being, certainly anyone on Wall Street, is you know, the better deal you give the customer, the worse deal it is for you. Because you're on the other side of the transaction. It's like, any, it's like going into any, any store. You know, this, the store sells you a television at a higher price, they're going to make more money. They sell you the lower price, their profit you know, goes down accordingly. So the, you know, as honest as you can find, you, you try and get people to, to, to be, there's this, this, this normal natural pull you know, that you have to deal with. So by, by taking the human being out of the equation to a great extent and turning it over to a computer to make the decision, uh, I guess you could, you could also program the computer to, to violate the regulation, <laughs> but we haven't gotten there yet. You know? The issue is, is by taking the human being out of the factor and putting someone like Josh to go back and, and run all sorts of algorithms, and he'll be a, can explain that to you because every time he tries to explain it to any one of in the Madoff family, we, you know, we walk out of the room after 15 minutes. Uh, but that, by doing Maybe that, we don't want him to do that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> by, by doing that, you were able to automate the process. And where today, just to give you an example of the scope of that, we were able to take a, an operation that, that had, uh, probably going to ask me for a raise after this, <laughs> where we had, let's say, uh, 40 people, you know, doing 300,000 transactions a day, which is what our, our, our normal transaction count would be. Uh, we have a team headed by Josh and what, five people, six people? Yes, uh, seven, I guess. Clearly. Okay, seven people, you know, handling that same thing that, that 50 people, you know, might, might have been involved in. And, th and that's, this is uh, what all market making firms, you know, do today. That's the way they operate. Well, so I'm going to ask this to both of you, but I'm going to start with Mickey. So this is great. We've gotten rid of all these irrational, flawed, error-prone, corrupt people, potentially so. Um, uh, died this past Sunday at home. Uh, Bernie Madoff did admit to running that massive Ponzi scheme, and now he says he wants out of prison only about 140 years earlier. One victim I spoke with last night said that Bernie Madoff has chutzpah, and it's hard to argue with that. He first revealed to me in 2014 that he had stage 4 kidney disease and that he was foregoing dialysis rather than prolonging his life. Now he is 81 years old and apparently near the end. According to his new attorney, Brandon Sample, who specializes in getting elderly inmates out of prison, Madoff has end-stage kidney disease and should be allowed to die with the support and comfort from the remaining loved ones that he has. In the motion to Judge Denny Chin, the same judge who sentenced Madoff to 150 years, Sample writes, Madoff has expressed remorse for his crimes. Now over 10 years of incarceration later and after uh, with less than 18 months to live, Madoff humbly asks the court for a modicum of compassion. I last heard from Bernie Madoff in July. That was when he was moved into the prison medical center in Butner, North Carolina to begin his end of life care. He told me then in an email that he is fine. He has since told the Washington Post that he has suffered from his mistakes and he wants to be able to get out and see his grandchildren and explain to them what happened. Guys? 
Yeah, it's quite the story, uh, Scott, and I'm sure that you've been in contact with many of the victims. And aside from having chutzpah, I I'm sure there's a few comments that are not ready for prime time, things you cannot say on live national television from some of these victims hearing that Madoff right. would like to get out of jail. Yeah, and, you know, in, in this, this lengthy court filing, uh, he takes a similar tack and actually cites this case of, of Bernie Ebers. The idea being in the judge ruling in that case that letting him out of prison uh, early will not get the victims their money back. It doesn't diminish the uh, severity of the crimes. But this new First Step Act, the criminal justice reform, says that inmates that are, are at this state near death should be allowed to die at home. Now, the Bureau of Prisons has denied him uh, his request for compassionate release. That's why he has now gone to the judge. And one of the reasons they denied the release is that it would diminish the severity of his crimes, and they don't get much more severe than the crimes of Bernie but, Madoff. But, I mean, wasn't the whole point that he was being sentenced for life? That, that it was a life sentence. That was, that was what he was being given at the end. That's right. It was a 150-year sentence. But right. same situation with Bernie Ebers, uh, who was in his 60s at the time, and the judge said that she realized that it was going to be a life sentence. Nonetheless, they let him out anyway. Um, yeah, it, it was it was absolutely designed to be a life.